Good morning to everyone. In the name of Jesus. Good morning, Pastor. Um, it is a blessing to have you all this morning once again. And I might say that it is early this morning, but looking at the number that is here, I can always say that may God bless you guys. You are very committed, and I know in God's own time, He will reward you richly. This morning, I have a very wonderful message for you in this devotion. And um, I title it, Faith in God Give Purpose to Life. Faith in God Give Purpose in Life. Give Purpose to Life. You see, sometimes when we are born into this world, uh, we tend to enter into different areas. Because uh, at the end of the day, we are taken to different schools from our elementary and even to the universities and colleges. And uh, because our human effort want to find something to do, we find ourselves in different type of professions. And those professions become our, our, our gates. Those professions become our walls. And when those professions become our walls, sometimes we do not reach the potential we are supposed to reach. But our faith in God will give purpose to our life. Because it is only God who knows who you are. It is only God who knows who you, He wants you to be. It is only God who knows where He wants you to go. It is only God who knows what He wants you to do. So when we give our life totally to God, and we follow Him in faith, God will give purpose to our life. That is what I want us to have this morning, as our inspiration and devotion. And I'm taking the Bible text from the book of Judges, chapter number 6. And we are reading from 11 and to somewhere 15. And I think you will read 16, 17, and when you get time today. Let this Bible text become your text. Judges number 6, chapter 6, verse number 11 to 15. Judges... Oh. 6, verse 11 to 15, no problem. As we read, take it for me. And it says, We are requesting that the angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belongs to Joas, the Beazite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a we spread to keep from the Midianites. 12. And when the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about? And when they said, did not, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hands of Midian. 14. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have, you, uh, go in the strength you have, and set Israel out of Midian, Midian hand. Am I not sending you 15? Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied, But how can I save Israel? My clan is the wicked in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. May God bless us this morning in the name of Jesus. The message I want you to. We are requesting. We are requesting that uh, perhaps you could turn your video on. All right, that will be fine. Yes. The message I'm coming this morning Thank is you. that the Lord God is with you, mighty man of valor. 
The Lord God is with, with you, mighty man of strength. And you know, God has called you the way he has called Gideon. He called Gideon who was a farmer. Because Gideon was thrashing wheat. And Gideon said, how can I, a farmer, become a mighty warrior? How can I, a farmer, become the one who will save Israel from the hands of Midian? And Gideon started giving God excuses. He said it in chapter 15. Pardon me, my Lord. Gideon replied. And he said, Ah, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in, in Manasseh. And I am the least in my family. Most of the time, that is what we say. When the word of God comes to us and push our hearts to do something mighty for the Lord, we say we are from the poorest of the communities. We are the, from the poorest of the families. Our parents are not even Christians. Some of us say, oh, how can we be mighty of this nature? And we say, oh, if the Lord is with us, why are we in trouble? If the Lord is with me, why have I not find a partner to marry? If the Lord is with us, why am I not getting job after school? If the Lord with, is with me, why am I so sick and I am not getting healing? This morning, the message is coming from Judges chapter 6, verse 11, going, that indeed the Lord is with you because faith will give you purpose in life. If you give your life and everything under the control of the Lord, the Lord God Almighty will take you to places you never dreamt of. He will use you mightily for his glory in the name of Jesus. Looking at this passage, Gideon was a farmer, as I said before, but the Lord wanted him to be a warrior. The way God sees you is not the way you see yourself. So stop giving excuses. The way God sees you is beyond your reasonable doubt. So stop giving God your history. Because I want to tell you, God sees you different. And God knows you even when you were caught of blood in your mother's womb. And God knows your parents. And God knew the name they were going to give to you. And God knows the place he wants to take you to. God knows they will call you Whitney. God knows they will call you Sarafay. God knows they will call you uh, um, uh, Bernard. God knows they will call you Amos. God knows any name they will call you. And because God knows all these names, he knows you before you were born. So if you walk in faith with God, he will give you purpose in life. I can tell you today, God even knew the school you attended. And God knew you so well that he knew all the number of hair on your head. Is it not that wonderful? And God has deposited a lot of talent. He has deposited a lot of talent in you. He has given you gifts. And he has given you value. And he has fighting you for his own will. So therefore, we have to stop giving God excuses. Telling God, my family is the smallest in Mongazi. Uh, we are the poorest in Mongazi. We are not living in the best of community in Mongazi. God, I am not, I cannot speak. God, I cannot do this. We are giving excuses the way Moses was giving God excuses on the mountain. But nevertheless, if the Lord God has prepared you for a mission, he has prepared you to save, even to become the president of Kenya, you cannot run away from the purpose of God. If he has prepared you to become a pastor, you can't run away from the purpose of God. If God has prepared you to become the judge, you cannot run away from the purpose of God. Because knowing God introduced us to self. For us to know ourselves very well, we must be well versed in God. And if we give our life to God, I tell you, God will take you to places. He will make you the personality of value. And he will let you know that indeed, he is the king of kings and he is the lord of lords. As we continue, I want you to listen to God. For this morning, he has a powerful message for you. That indeed, he knows why. And he knows where you are. And as we all sit here, God knows our location. And he knows why he has placed you there. He has prepared a moment for you. And that moment is soon to come. And what I can tell you is that 
If we can lower ourselves unto God and surrender our life to Him, unto Jesus, I surrender. And if you surrender your life to God, God will make you great. Let me tell you a small story as we continue to be preparing ourselves to break. I told you the other day that indeed when I started life, I started as a teacher. I was teaching a secondary school. And I, I, was, I thought that was my calling. And I loved that job very much. But it got to a point my passion in that job has vanished. And I entered into climate change. And I thought, okay, this is the way God wanted me to be. And God was going to fly me around the world indeed for me to champion the protection of the natural environment and to lower the temperatures in the, in the world so that humanity will get sustenance. And indeed, it was giving me that particular kind of global flair. But never did I know that indeed God has another mission for me. And God wanted me to come into his ministry for me to become a vessel for which he will use this as, as a channel to communicate his message. What I want you to know is that you can train as engineer, but maybe, maybe God wants you to be a communicator. You can be an aviation specialist, but maybe God wants you to be a pastor. Maybe you can be a nurse. Maybe God wants you to be an evangelist. What you need to know is that when we walk in faith in God, he will lower us and he will give us purpose in life. You may be a lawyer and maybe God wants you to be the musician. I want you to know today that God's purpose for your life will stand. Your family history cannot stop God's purpose. Your condition currently will not stop God's purpose. Your financial status will not stop God's purpose. Because God's purpose is supreme. Now let me take you to 17, 16, 17 of the same text. That is as, uh, uh, Judges chapter 6 verse 16 to 17. And listen to what he said. And when he was saying, pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. And the Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. And at 18, please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. Praise the Lord. Some of us are waiting for proof from God. Some of us are waiting for proof. Sometimes it's good for God to show you proof. Sometimes it's good. But I can tell you that keep your faith in God. Trust in the Lord. Trust not in your own understanding. Trust in not only in your own education, but trust in the mighty hand of the Lord. For the Lord knows his people, and the Lord knows where he wants you to be. And I want you to have that particular kind of conviction this morning, that your status of job will not stop God. Will not stop God for doing what he wants to do for you. God will always be God. And God will always show up for his people. And I tell you, young people of Wanganza this morning, that this week God will show his hand upon you. And God will show his face upon you. And God will take you to places he wants you to be. And God will mightily manifest his life into you. Let me tell you what he said to Jeremiah. And when God called Jeremiah, Jeremiah gave the same message. In Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 4, and if you read in 5, Jeremiah said, Oh, for I am young, for I, am, I cannot speak. I can't speak God. But God said, let me tell you, Jeremiah, I know you well, you can speak. Even when you were clothed in your mother's womb, I know you. And I, when you were clothed in your mother's womb, I appointed you as a prophet over my nation. So if God has appointed you, he knew you. All your weakness in the, is in the palm of the Lord. All your weakness is known to God. But God wants to use you in your weakness so that indeed it will be a glory to his name, that it will be wonder to the world. 
God wants to use you in your weakness. God wants to use you in every status you find yourself now. And I want to tell you, do not give God excuses. Don't give God excuses this week. Move in the mighty hand of the Lord and let God show you his favor. Move in the mighty hand of the Lord and let God show you his glory. Move in the mighty hand of the Lord and let God's greatness show upon you. And I can tell you that if you give God a chance, God will make you the best. Because you know one thing, God is the maker. We are the clay. He can break us and rearrange us and mold us to the refined level he wants. Whatever that is missing in your life, God will replace it. Whatever that is misaligned, God will align it. And whatever that is impeding you, God will take it out. Because I tell you before, and I'm saying it once again, that if God has a purpose for your life, nothing will stop him. Nothing will stop God. It is time for us to open our heart unto the Lord and pray as we are praying this week. Tell God, tell me my purpose in life. God, take me to places you want me to be. God, position me where you want me to be. God, empower me for what you want me to live my life on this world. Let me have fulfillment in life. And let me become a pillar in your ministry. However way you want to use me, I am ready. And I can tell you that God is going to do great things for you. And the world will watch you and be marveled. So I am preparing for us to break into prayers this morning so that each and every one will be able to put our supplication before the Lord. But what I want you to know is that for those that he has called, he has also justified. And those he has justified, he has also sanctified. And those he has sanctified, he has also glorified. So if God has called you, he has sanctified you. If he has sanctified you, he has also what? Glorify you. What you need is to place your life into the hands of the Lord. What do I leave you before we go for prayers? What I leave you is that God do not call the qualified. He qualified the call. God will not use angels. He will use men, men with passion, men with lust, men with weakness, so that we can communicate to our fellow men about who God is. And I can tell you, your story is what you are waiting for. Your story will be the greatest story in the life of other people. And people will use you as a point of inspiration. Your marriage will be an inspiration in Mongaza. And even in Kenya, I can tell you, your, your employment will be one that will blow people's mind. Even though you are not employed now, your employment will be one thing that will blow people's mind. Because God will position you where he knows you'll be good for what he wants to use you for. So don't give up. Don't give up in whatever situation you find yourself. The Lord will by all means show up for you. And his glory will be so mighty upon you. I want to tell you that it is a moment for you. You are the epic that everyone is waiting for. It is your moment. You have to take that moment. And you have to make it big. Because God is going to make it big. Concluding, you know how the story ended. The Lord God asked Gideon to assemble the men of Israel. And he assembled a multitude. And because God wanted to tell Gideon that indeed, I am the one going before you. And I'm the one going to fight for you. The Lord God told Gideon to reduce the men. And he reduced them to the minimum number. I think 300. And the Lord took them for battle. And that battle was one of the battles of victory. And indeed, Gideon became the mighty man of valor. He became the mighty warrior. So God is seeing you as a giant. God is seeing you as an eagle. Don't see yourself to be a chicken. God is seeing you as a lion. Don't see yourself to be a cat. Because you are mighty in the hands of the Lord. And his mighty hand will rest upon your shoulder. And that mantle of greatness will smile at you. And your name and your story will change. And you will become a point of reference to many people as a walking testimony of God's goodness. May the Lord bless us as we are sharing ourselves and moving into our rooms.
to have prayer at this moment. Thank you very much, and may God bless you. Amen.